going on everybody it's your favorite on Timo and we are back for another episode review of love after lockup this is season two episode 36 um what's this called truth and consequences yeah truth and consequences before we get into the review if you have not done so just yet go ahead and subscribe to my channel let me know what you think about this video give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down and then hit the notification bell so you will know whenever i upload new content y'all this episode of love after lockup was good um, I know I said I was gonna bring it to y'all last night, but my sister came, we got to drinking, we got to kiki and doing what girls do, and I I just got too tipsy. I couldn't even do it. I apologize. I'm so sorry. Y'all my tongue is red. I've been slamming on some damn starburst. I'm all up in my goddamn baby trick-or-treat bag, and I don't give a damn. I had to walk miles for the goddamn candy too, so it's mine still. But um, yeah, I don't want to hold it up. I don't want to make this review any longer. So hopefully y'all are ready for the review because I'm ready to give it to you. So let's get right on up into it. First off, if y'all joined me on the live that I did last night, thank you so much. I appreciate you. I'm going to try to bring more lives to you guys. For sure, I'm going to do Friday nights. I'm going to do something like um, auntie's um, ask auntie or auntie's advice. So you know, something like that where you can ask me any questions that you have advice and shit like that because you know i think i'm a certified bona fide sex therapist as well as life coach and um all that other good shit in between you know what i'm saying so if it's some questions that you want to ask some advice that you have go ahead hit me up let me know but for real tune in on friday nights because i will be going live then doing ask auntie okay but y'all let's start with daniel and lizzie okay I thought Daniel and Lizzie was super cute this episode, okay? Now, look here. So, as they pick up from the last episode, you know, Daniel was getting ready to take Lizzie on this little surprise date that he's going on, right? He wants to propose to her, you know, unbeknownst to his mama, she done purchased what she thought was the promise ring, which is really an engagement ring that he's going to present to Lizzie later on, right? Now, Lizzie gets to the house, and he tells Lizzie to pack a bag, He's going to blindfold her, and he will be driving her car. Now, uh, coming from a bitch that loves surprises, I was like, ew. <laughs> drip, drip. Go ahead then, Daniel. I like that. That's sexy as hell. When a motherfucker come home and tell you, look here. Put on some nice shit. Pack a bag. Don't ask nothing. I'm taking your ass out. Spool. Splash. Okay, nigga. Where we going? Okay. That's what I'm talking about right there. So... He ends up blindfolding her, and he is super excited. He is giddy like a little kid. I was, I thought it was so cute to see Daniel so excited to take Lizzie on this little date that he has for her, right? So he leads her out to the car, and she's blindfolded. He ends up taking her to a destination hotel. Her dream has always been to go to Paris. So he rented out this room that was a Paris-themed room. It had a little Eiffel Tower in it. It had, like, beautiful paintings in it. The Mona Lisa. It had fountains. It had flowers everywhere. The shower was like an Eiffel Tower. I thought that was sexy and dope as hell because the shower was right there in the room. So you can get your romantical shit on. Oh, I was saying, Em, Daniel, she gonna pop that pussy on you later, Daniel, for real. She gonna dip and squat and hula hoop and all up on that thing. Shit, I know I will. You take me to a destination. Take me to some Hawaii or some Jamaica destination. Hotel, I bet it's going down. It's going down, okay? So, um, he ends up taking her there, and it's really cute. And she, you know, she almost cries because it's so beautiful. So they sit down and they have a little talk or whatever. And he's like, So, do you think this this between me and you is really gonna work? And she's like, Of course, you know, why wouldn't it work? She was so surprised when she seen the room. And like I said, it was just really cute. It was a really cute gesture from him to show her how much he loves her and how much he appreciates her. So, of course, he does pull out the ring, he asks her to marry him she does accept and I think it is super cute you know hopefully everything works out between them mama gonna kick a field goal in his ass when she find out that she bought a goddamn engagement ring and not a promise ring like he lied to her and said it was because I know if it was my son I'd kick a fucking field goal in his ass too if it was me that's just me though but his mama gonna kick field goal with his ass when she finds out though but hopefully everything works out you know they live long enough to make it to a goddamn wedding but um I still think it's some secrets that Lizzie got that she ain't exposed all the way just yet. So Daniel tread lightly on that thing. But you know what I'm saying? Congratulations to them. Shout out to them. And hopefully everything works out. 
Next up, y'all, we got Amber and Vince. So this picks up where the last episode left off. Amber was on the phone arguing with Puppy because Puppy's telling her, bitch, you gonna have to suck it up, slob on that knob, and do what you gotta do. This is the plan. I need you to fall through with your part of the deal. You know what I'm saying? That's when Puppy's mama was on top of the deck because she was listening to everything that Amber and Puppy was over there arguing about, right? So mama get off the deck. She go over there and talk to Amber. She like, you know, what's up? What's good? You know what I'm saying? Shit don't sound right between what's going on with everything. You know, let mama know what's popping. So Amber ends up telling Puppy's mother, you know, the plan that they had. The plan was when Vincent wrote to her, her puppy and her mother, they all, meaning Amber's mother, they swore to secrecy that this was going to be the plan, right? Amber was going to get out. She was going to marry Vince. With Vince being in the military, she would be able to, re um, to reap some of the financial benefits of him being in the military, right? Once she was able to reap some of those benefits, she would put some money to the side so that she could take care of her puppy and her mother and that they would be set. But... Like Puppy's mother pointed out, what you didn't bargain for when you came home is that you was actually going to have to sleep with a man. You didn't think you was going to have to follow through with that part. Now that it's in your face, you can't do it. Amber's like, oh, hell to the no. To the no, no, no. I didn't think it would be this hard to do this. Now, part of Amber feels guilty because like she said, you know, she don't want to be out here fucking on a scamming ass, rich ass nigga. She don't want to do that. She want to live on a straight and narrow, you know what I'm saying? Get out here and do things the right way. But she did promise her mom. And she promised Puppy that she would follow through with her end of the bargain, right? But again, she can't do that. She like Taco Tuesday. She don't like Meat Monday. You know what I'm saying? So she got this travel pass, this uh, travel pass that she got from her PO. She can go to Indiana to a family reunion, right? Now she's excited to go there, but she told all her family about Vince, being that this is the man that she's gonna marry, and she told Vince that she's gonna bring him to the family reunion. So now she's stuck between Meat Monday and Taco Tuesday. She she don't know what the hell to do because she don't want to be with Vincent, but she knows that her family ain't going to want to fuck with her when they know that she out here doing some old conning ass shit. You know what I'm saying? Because the family don't know that this motherfucker's a con, right? So Puppy's mama is trying to talk some sense into her because Puppy mama don't like the whole scamming ass shit that's going on. She's like, look here, if you don't like this man, you need to let him know because you're playing with his feelings like that. And I think Puppy mama kind of see the crazy in Vincent. She's like, this motherfucker be a hitman for hire. Don't play with crazy people like that. You need to go on here and let this motherfucker know if you don't want to be with him. But like I said, she's stuck between Meat Monday, Taco Tuesday, but we all know she don't fuck with meat like that. So you need to go on here and let Vincent know so Vincent won't go out here and kill nobody. You know what I'm saying? But, um... Like I said, she's stuck. She don't know what the hell she gonna do. So we gonna see what's gonna happen with that. But um, you gonna have to let that motherfucker know something quick or let Puppy and them know. Because like she say, she just can't see herself. She she can't bring herself to fake it till she make it. And you know what? That's good. I hate you even set the shit up in the first place and you were not gonna follow through with it because that's some crazy shit right there too. But I'm glad that she's not really trying to go through with scamming this man. So we gonna see what's gonna happen on the next couple of episodes. But child, we already knew what they were scamming each other any damn way. Next up, y'all, we got Angela and Tony, y'all. Okay, look, so Tommy is with Angela. She finna go get ready to pick up Ty uh, Tony from jail, right? Now, Tommy, we already know Tommy is madly in love with Angela, and he don't want shit to do with Tony. He wants Tony out the picture completely, right? Now, Angela tells Tommy that she's gotten to a point to where she can forgive him. She's ready to open up and see if things can really work out between her and Tony. Now, she told Tommy, make sure you have to promise me that you're not going to say nothing to Tony about you proposing to me because she don't want Tony to get upset. For whatever reason, she wants Tony and Tommy to be friends. Now, like Tommy say, I'm going to be there for you regardless. You know, I got your back. But at the same time, Tommy say he finna grill Tony ass because Tony had a whole nother bitch that he was out here with. He only seen you when he was fresh out of jail. You didn't see his ass. No time after that. He had a whole nother thing that he was got going on. When this whole time, I could have been in there like swimwear. You know what I'm saying? So anything that Tommy can do to break up this little union with Tony and Angela, that that's what the hell he gonna that's what the hell he gonna do. But like Angela say, I just don't want you to come down here with no crazy shit. Don't be telling this motherfucker that you proposed to me because I ain't got time for his ass to be going off. Not only that, Angela ready for the D. She write a hunch on that thing. She still ain't got none of that. He was locked up for what a year and then locked up for another four months and she still ain't got none of that meat. That's what she ready for. And she don't want Tony uh Tommy fucking up. Nothing that she got going on with that. 
Tommy tells Angela, I have $600,000 in the bank right now. Let's move to Jamaica. I'll take care of you. She gonna look at this and like, motherfucker, I told you. I'm in love with Tony. I'm waiting on Tony. I have told you that already, Tommy. You just got to, you don't have to understand it. I'd have been like, fuck Tony. She says she's so ready for him to get out because she's ready for his sexy body. And she's just ready to just rub on him and love on him. And my honey, my lover, child, when I tell you this fool, Tony came out the damn jail. He looked bigger than what he was the first time when he went in. I was like, damn. What you been eating up in the damn jail, boy? He got big. I don't remember him having titties in the belly like that, but that boy came out. He came out thicker than a snicker. I was like, oh, whatever cupcake camp he went to, that nigga was eating good up in there. Try he get out. Him and Angela just a kiss and just a kill. It was nasty. It was nasty. The whole time they kissing, Tony in the cut looking like this. No, not Tony, Tommy. I keep confusing these motherfuckers. Tommy in the background looking like this. Boy, if I could run up to your ass and shoot you in between your eyes right goddamn now, motherfucker, I would. The whole time, no. He's just sitting back staring at Angela and Tony tongue each other down, right? And he was like, oh, I missed you so much. I missed you too, my lover. They just kissing, tonguing the shit up, right? It's just, it was real fucking gross. So, she introduces Tony to Tommy. Tommy's like, oh, it's, it's a pleasure to finally meet you. He's like, yeah, you know, nice to meet you too. They get in the car because, of course, Angela's like, you know, I was thinking we can go get something to eat. Let's go and get something to eat, right? In the car, y'all, on the way driving to get something to eat, this motherfucker Tommy did not wait. Tommy digs right into Tony. He was like, so, uh, have you ever killed anybody before? Tony said, I don't really want to talk about that right now. Nigga, is that a yes or a no? I, I, I need to know the answer to that question now, my damn self. You know what I'm saying? So, Tommy is just like, you know, I just don't see how can a person fall in love with somebody that they never met before. You know, it's just all so weird to me. Tony giving this whole little spiel about how you find your soulmate and the universe is connected to get all this other bullshit, blah, 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 bullshit he was saying. They get to the restaurant. Of course, the motherfucker want a steak. <laughs> Bitch, I would not get his ass no steak. You see what happened last time he got this nigga steak? He dipped on your ass. Get that nigga a burger next time. Take his ass to Taco Bell or something. Just steak these nuts. I'm sorry. No, son, not today. So, Tommy keeps on asking his questions. He's like, um... I want to put, I put it out on my, uh, my damn notes. He was just basically like, you know, what happened for you to choose Angela? Like, you know, why do you feel like you're so in love with Angela? You know, were you desperate is what he asked him. He asked him, were you desperate? And he was like, well, you know, yes and no. He said that he had eight to 10 other women donating to him when he met Angela. Once he met Angela, he cut it off with all the other women. Now... Even Angela's kind of looking like, I don't know if I believe you on that, Tony. Did you really break off with other older women? No, he didn't, girl. Because when he got out, he had already had somebody. Angela, hello, you're not a dumb woman. You're not a dumb woman. Come on now. But he claims that he... He loves Angela, that he's going to be with her. He's going to marry her. Now, he says in his green screen that he understands that Tommy was there and that he's done Angela wrong before, but now that he's out, that all of that in the past shouldn't matter, that he's here now and he's going to marry her, and that's all that matters. But look here, Tony, long as Tommy around, you ain't going to be able to get rid of, uh, get away with a whole lot of bullshit. Now, Tommy says he is a licensed professional therapist. So his job is to observe people and to study people. So he says right now, it's hard for him to believe that Tony is not trying to scam Angela out of money because that's what the hell he was doing in the first damn place. And we know this. Man, he ain't fooling no damn body. He only, you know what? The person he is fooling is Angela. Because Angela don't know no damn better. So, y'all, we're going to pray on that. Hopefully, Angela, <sighs> she's this man's sugar mama at this point. She's a sugar mama. She's a sugar mama. And she's okay with that. Glorietta and Alex, y'all. Okay. Alex is in the car with his homeboy, Kato. Because, you know, homeboy, Kato, took him to go see his ex, Angelina, earlier that day. 
Now, Cato's wife and Glorietta, they at the restaurant because they're waiting on Cato and they're waiting on Alex to get back there so they can have their little date for Valentine's Day or whatever, right? Now, Cato is telling Alex, I think it's wrong that you lead an old girl on. If you don't want to be with her, you need to let her know. But you're still in love with your ex. You're not in love with Glorietta and you need to let her know. I ain't going to say nothing, but you know I ain't finna lie neither. You know what I'm saying? I don't like holding secrets. This shit feel wrong to me. So you finna have to let homegirl know. He like, all right, cool. I know eventually we won't have to have a conversation tonight to ain't the night for it though you know what i'm saying when we get here i'm gonna need you to play it cool don't say nothing child what this motherfucker do soon as they get there they sit down ordering food kato goes right in like okay um, we were just having a conversation because Kato's wife asked what took him so long to get there, right? Kato was like, well, I was just drilling my boy seeing uh, if he's really ready for all of this. Like, if he's really ready to get married, if y'all are really in a real relationship. Glorietta's like, yes, we just have to figure out um, the food for the wedding. And we have to figure out flowers. And we have to figure out a venue and guests. Kato looking like, Kato and his old lady both looking like, is this bitch for real? Um, you need to figure out why he going to see his old, other old bitch. That's what you need to figure out. Kato's trying to drop hints to this girl, but he's trying to do it in a subtle way. He's like, you worried about food. That needs to be the last thing you worried about. How about you worry about if y'all can get a home, y'all can live together, y'all can stand each other, y'all can deal with each other, y'all can be truthful, and y'all can be honest with each other. He's like basically trying to let this bitch know like hey bitch hello i'm trying to let you know something i'm trying to let you know something like bitch hey get it together you know what i'm saying nigga doing something she's still not getting it then alex starts to, to turn to glorietta he's like you know why do you really love me like do you really love me why do you want to marry me and she was kind of like in this in this particular Seeing, I can understand why Glorietta was getting frustrated because she's like, why would you ask me, why do I really love you? Why do I really want to marry you? Now, mind you, he just fresh off of seeing Angelina. So he got his old bitch in his mind. Now, he even said that he's still in love with her. He's got to figure things out with Glorietta. So in my opinion, old school bitch now, it seemed like he was trying to pick an argument with her so he would have a reason to sort of be away from her so he can go and deal with what he got to deal with with Angelina. Because he was like, you can't answer why you really want to love me and whoopty whoop yada yada yada. She's getting pissed off now. Glorietta is at this point. Now, Kato can see, like, okay, uh, baby, want to smoke a cigarette? Let's go ahead and go downstairs and smoke a cigarette because, you know, shit getting hot up in here. So, Kato and his old lady go downstairs and smoke a cigarette. Angelina, I mean, uh, not Angelina, what's that bitch named Glorietta and Alex, they still sitting here talking. And he's like, well, you know, I just want to know. I'm just asking you a simple question, like, why do you want to marry me? Like, what is it that you love about me? Alex is trying to use this excuse, like, he feels like, Glorietta only says she loves him because he looked good and he got tattoos and a nice body, which could very well be true in Glorietta's eyes, but she rolled for your ass the whole time that she was down. She got molded a little bit of love like that for you now. But again, he only been out three, four weeks, so they still trying to get to know each other and all of that, right? So Glorietta gets pissed off. Alex gets pissed off. Alex then goes downstairs and smokes a cigarette. Now, the cameraman is talking to Gloria. Gloria's like, I don't know. Like, this isn't what she's supposed to do. Like, when you're having dinner, like, it's just very disrespectful that you, like, do something like this. Like, I don't understand this. Like, it's Valentine's Day. And why would he do this to me on Valentine's Day? Side note. B-A-L-E-N-T-I-N-E. Valentine's Day. God damn it. It is not Valentine's Day. It's like, it's like fucking nails on the chalkboard to me. Ooh! But, anyways, she ends up following him downstairs. They get to arguing some more because he once again asks her, I'm asking you a simple question. Why do you love me? Why do you want to marry me? She wants to, she's just like, whatever. Why would you ask me that right now? Like, you feel like I don't love you? Like, I feel like you're trying to hide something from me, which he is. He fucking is. I'm, it, the, the fuck? He is. They get to arguing. He gets pissed off. He walks off. Kato goes and finds him. Him and Kato get to exchanging my nick. Oh, girl, it give me a headache. Hold on. Kato goes up to Alex and was like, dog, what happened? Where you duck off to? 
Addis like, nah, my nigga man, and she tripping my nigga, my nigga this, and my nigga. I was like, oh, 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 time out. What the, what is, correct me if I'm wrong, and I'm the only one that see something wrong with that. It's something wrong with that to me, y'all. I'm sorry, but it is. It was getting on my damn nerves and the disrespect of him. You know what? This is the thing with Alex. He ain't been around no, no real hood niggas. Because had he been around some real hood niggas, he wouldn't be saying that. I can guarantee you he wasn't saying that shit in prison. If he was, he was saying it to his, his people that he was with. But oh, he wasn't walking on the yard in front of hood ass niggas talking about what's up my nigga. No, you wasn't. You wasn't. Calm that shit down. Cut the shit. Any damn ways. Kato too. Nah, my nigga, you ready to go, my nigga? Yeah, my nigga, I'm ready to go, my nigga. This nigga tricking me. All right, my nigga. So they get in the car. They dip. Leave Glorietta sitting out there in front of the restaurant by herself. Y'all. Glorietta. Glorietta. Alex. To hell with Alex. Move on from Alex. He's doing too damn much. He and a girl. No ma'am. No ma'am. No ma'am. Moving on from them. Lacey, Shane, and John. Y'all, this next. <laughs> this shit was funny, y'all. So it picked up where it left off right. Lacey don't win, picked up John from the prison. Shane and caught a ride with the production. He done made it up there to the goddamn jail release. Um, what's that motherfucking name? John and Lacey out there arguing. Next thing you know, Shane walk up. Lacey hop out the car. Her and Shane just start kissing and tugging each other down. John looking like, what the fuck is that? Really? It was so weird. They were trying to kiss to piss John off. So the kiss just look real weird and awkward. It's like they're like... Trying to make him mad. John calling this motherfucker. He like, he like a fucking backstreet boy. He like a little puppy. He talking about Shane's ass bad. Now, Shane looked a little scared to me. I think he could see, okay, this is a grown crazy man. I'm a young crazy. It's the difference between a young crazy and a grown crazy. He was grown crazy. And Shane could see. Shane didn't want no parts of that grown ass crazy. Because Shane got his ass in that car like Lacey told his ass to but before he got in the car girl Lacey and getting into it with John John goes and tries to get on his phone Lacey snatches his phone girl gets in his face talking about fuck you bitch what I'll call your PO you think I won't you better fucking respect him I was like bitch if you don't sit your big bobble lip head ass down somewhere girl you're doing an app so fucking lootly most. Finally, she ends up giving the boy his phone. She gets in the car with Shane. They drive off. Shane was like, yeah, I'm glad you love me. You did, because who? I was going to who? You weren't going to do a goddamn thing, boy. You was going to get your goddamn ass handed to you. John is grown crazy. He not young crazy. It's a goddamn difference. Y'all, so they end up making it back to the goddamn house. They make it back to the house. Now Lacey realizes that she's in love with Shane ever so even more. You done came to the prison release after I told you not to when you stuck up for me by sitting in the car and not saying nothing when he was cussing your ass out? I love you. Can I have a ring back? John, so he gives her the ring back. Basically, he reproposes to her because he just so happened to have it in his pocket. So he gets down on one knee. He proposes to Lacey. And Lacey, of course, says yes. Y'all, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot. This episode was funny as hell. The episode pretty much ended from there. You know what I'm saying? Of course, she still has to find out whether or not John is the father of her son, Marlo, her middle child, where her other two baby daddies at. I don't know. But, um, Shane, I got a feeling she's still going to be fucking with John. I just got a feeling that she is on the next episode. I mean, they have a little meetup, you know what I'm saying? And John is talking to her ever so sweetly. 
And, um, you know what I'm saying? She kind of look like she balling for it. But you know what I'm saying? That's your bitch. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully, everything works out for the both of you. But y'all, the episode ended from there. If it was something that I missed, please don't forget. Y'all already know. Put it down below. Let me know. Don't forget, if you are not following my socials, go ahead and do so. They are in the description box below. Don't forget, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And Auntie Mo, we'll see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala.